do we really need to soak our grains? And do we need to even soak and sprout them? Does it really make it more nutritious for us? And is it something that we definitely have to be doing? I get this question a lot. And today in the news from Mary's Nest, we're gonna talk all about this. Hi, sweet friends. I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, sourdough, ferments, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. So why do we even soak grains in the first place? That's an excellent question. And in the video where I show you how to soak and sprout grains, I go into this in great detail. But here what I'll share is the reason that we soak grains and even ultimately go on to soak and sprout them is because grains contain uh, what's often referred to as an anti-nutrient called phytic acid. Now, why is phytic acid a problem? Well, the reason is when we consume phytic acid, it can prevent us from absorbing all of the nutrients that are available to us from the grain. But when we soak our grain in some type of acidulated water, a little water with some lemon juice or some vinegar, it activates another substance that's in the grain that's called phytase. And the phytase helps to neutralize the phytic acid, which then makes our bodies more able to absorb the nutrients that come from the grain. And what's important about deactivating, so to speak, that phytic acid is that phytic acid can bind to the minerals in our body and then remove those minerals from our body. And those may be minerals that we need to have good health. So the phytase in deactivating the phytic acid can stop that mineral depletion. Now, if you lived in a traditional culture where grains were your primary source of nutrition, then soaking and even sprouting might be very important. You would want that phytase to be activated to help start deactivating the phytic acid. Because if grains are your primary source of nutrition, you need to make sure that you're extracting as much nutrition as possible from them and that you're not allowing the phytic acid to strip minerals and nutrients, vitamins, so on and so forth from your body. But in a modern Western diet where we have such a diverse selection of foods and one in which we're omnivores eating meat and vegetables and so on and so forth, do we really need to worry about soaking grains? I don't know about you, but for me, I find soaking grains a bit of a pain and sprouting them can take days. And if you don't go through the process of sprouting them and then drying them and then grinding them so that you're working with sprouted flour, just working with the wet soaked grain or the wet soaked flour, I find can often make a relatively dense baked good. Chances are, if we're eating a very diverse omnivore diet, we have plenty of minerals and nutrients and vitamins in our body. So any effect that the phytic acid may have that we eat from grains that have not been soaked and or sprouted may not really have a significant effect on our health. Now, if you find you have trouble digesting grains and you found that soaking them and or soaking and sprouting them has made them more digestible for you, then definitely that is something that's worth doing. But if you're in good health and you find that grains that haven't been soaked and or soaked and sprouted agree with you, I'm not so convinced that we necessarily have to soak and sprout them. I think we might just be able to eat the grains as is. And from what I've been learning as I've been researching this topic has been fascinating to me that some people, based on your culture, based on your genetics, may actually benefit from the phytic acid in grains. What I've learned from what scientists have found is that phytic acid is actually an antioxidant. Now, in stripping minerals or nutrients, whatever the case may be, from your body, they've also found, these scientists have found, that phytic acid can actually strip heavy metals from your body. I found this fascinating. 
and where it's important to have phytic acid, in essence, in the grains that you're eating to help remove some minerals from your body is in the case of people who may be of Irish ancestry. And I found this absolutely fascinating because I am of part Irish ancestry. And what I read was that people who are, who are of Irish ancestry tend to hold on to iron, on almost a little too much iron. And if you hold on to too much iron, that can actually create health problems for you. And throughout my life, in my blood tests, I've always had more than enough iron. So maybe there's something to it. And phytic acid, one of the minerals that it's really known for pulling out of our body, is iron. So the phytic acid binds to the iron in our gut, and it also, as I mentioned earlier, has been found to bind to heavy metals and remove them from our system. So maybe those of us who are of Irish ancestry or part Irish ancestry, as in my case, um, may be able to consume grains without soaking them, and maybe they'll actually do us some benefit. And maybe people who have been exposed to a lot of heavy metals, they too might benefit from eating grains in their natural state without soaking them. They may benefit from the phytic acid. So should we soak our grains or not? What does it all come down to? I think the bottom line is, as I mentioned a little bit earlier also, is what agrees with you? What agrees with us? When we eat whole grains, do we feel better if they've been soaked? Do we feel better if they've been soaked and sprouted? Or do we feel good if they're just prepared as is? I think we all need to get to know our bodies, get to know our digestive systems, find what agrees with us, and then prepare our foods, our real foods, and prepare them in a traditional manner that's best for us. We can look at our genetic history, we can look at our surroundings, and prepare our food in a way that is most nutritious for us. And don't forget, when it comes to preparing grains, we don't just have the soaking and sprouting method and then maybe going on to dry the sprouted grain and make sprouted flour. We have sourdough. And having a sourdough starter and baking with sourdough starter is wonderful. And I feel produces a terrific baked product as opposed to really anything else. So soaking and sprouting grains, it's really going to be a personal choice and find what agrees with you. But sourdough should always be on the menu. If you'd like to learn more about traditional cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you how to make my foolproof sourdough starter so you can start making sourdough bread. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.